The Great Step, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Step. People used to compose legends about it. Folk fantasy endowed it with sacred power and made the home of fairy tale spirits. People were afraid to come close to something which is so enormous and inexplicable, and travelers vainly sought to discover it. It seemed so close, and at the same time, it was far away. This is the treachery of distances. This is how deceptive the perspective of the height. It took centuries for the human to step this place, and only then Han Tingri Peak was mentioned on the geographical maps. What does this name of the peak mean? What mistake did the famous geographer Pyotr Simeonov Tian Shansky make while studying Han Tengri Peak? And how was the question of the mountain belonging to the neighboring countries resolved? Han Tengri Mountain was the first mentioned in the 6th to 7th centuries in Chinese chronicles. People of China called the peak the foothill of God's throne. Kyrgyz people called it the Bloody Mountain. The most popular interpretation of the name of the mountain is the Lord of the Sky. However, experts say the well-known name Han To is not associated with an amazing bright pink shine enlightening the sharp peak at the sunset. To understand the etymology of the name, we must go back to the events happening many centuries ago. Tengriism and Tengri had a special significance, played a central role in ancient Turkic mythology. They spiritualized the mountains. They considered the mountains as the place where the deities dwelled. This echoes the ancient Greek mythology, where the deities Prometheus, Zeus, Aphrodite and others lived on Mount Olympus in ancient Hellas. Thus, the deities of Turkic people lived in the mountains. Belief of our ancestors and the spirits was very strong. Do you remember the Tutkits, invisible guardians of the mountains who pushed on the chest of people that were going through the complex passes? It was believed that they guarded the material and spiritual treasures of Tengri hidden in the depths of the rocky peaks. Nowadays, this can be explained by the rare field atmosphere faced by the merchants and pilgrims unprepared for the ascent. Centuries before, people attached mysterious and sacred value to everything that could not be explained. They composed legends and passed these legends to the descendants. The scenic panorama that I saw seemed to be unreal. Above the dark, bizarre shape of the mountains bordering the gloomy twilight of the deep glacial valleys, Han Tingri Peak glowed red at the sunset. It looked like a giant sharp tulip, emitting fiery light. The light of lustrous brilliance went off with the sunset. 1957, summer. Pyotr Petrovich carefully checks the pack things. Everything is packed, so it is time to go. The geographer has not yet been authorized to add the epithet Tian Shansky to his last name, but he has already explored the Altai Mountains, reached Balkhash and Alakol Lakes, made two routes to Isakul Lake, gave the names to Trans Ili and Jungarian Alatau. His current path ran from the city Verni, modern Almaty, to the northern slopes of the Terski Alato Range. Accompanied by the guides, he reached the pass and suddenly stopped dazzled by the beauty. Directly to the south, there was the most majestic mountain range I have ever seen. It was covered with snow from top to bottom. And in the middle of this range, there was a high, sharp, snowy pyramid. It seemed to have double height to the rest peaks around. Pyotr Simeonov made the measurements of this peak and it has 7,000 meters of height. The famous geographer decided that this must be the legendary Han Tengri Peak. 
Due to the height of the peak, you could not see the other snow glacial massive range, which is the highest one of the Tian Shan Mountains. The guides, unfortunately, could not explain to the scientist traveler that his assumptions were wrong. Peak Hantengri historically has its own name, it's actually Kanto. We got used to call Han Tol as Han Tingri Peak. Han Tol means a bloody mountain. Han Tingri means the Lord of the Sky. It is the current Victory Peak, which is located on the territory of the border of Kyrgyzstan and China. And it is Han Tingri because the mountain is higher and has the highest point. When Semyonov Tian Shansky visited our region, the first thing he saw was the greatness of the Great Pyramid, and he perceived it as the highest one, the peak that we call Han Tingri Peak. There is a small geographical mistake that it has got accustomed among the people. People today perceive Han To as Han Tingri Peak. Она как-то прижилась в народе, то есть люди сегодняшние Кантоу воспринимают как пик Хантенгри. Thus, Han Tingri Peak was mentioned on the geographical map in the center of the Tian Shan Ridge, 20 kilometers to the north of its real location. And Semyonov Tian Shansky is remembered in history as the first European who saw, measured, and described the mountain peak. His scheme was used by subsequent researchers and border commissioners. Border commissioners used this scheme for political purposes. Neighboring countries started to argue on belonging of the 450 square kilometers of the mountain ridge. The Chinese border is situated close to this mountain range. There were questions about the demarcation of the border itself. That is, there were questions regarding the territory of which country Han Tengri Peak is located on, the territory of China, Kyrgyzstan, or Kazakhstan. Most probably, both tourists and alpinist athletes could not visit this area till the demarcation. Of course, Han Tengri Peak has always attracted the attention of mountaineers. It's a high, beautiful peak. It was not correct to hide such a pearl from others. The question of the demarcation of the Kyrgyz-Chinese border in this region was not solved until the 20th century. Only in July 1996, the parties reached a consensus. Thus, in August 1999, the agreement on the country borders was signed between Kazakhstan, China, and Kyrgyzstan, under the fourth meeting of the heads of member countries of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Nowadays, Han Tol Peak is formerly not only the peak of the three neighboring countries, but also a symbol of peace between them. At the same time, the mountain has not lost its mystery and attraction. Who made the first ascent on Hong Tengri? How many attempts did the German scientist make to achieve his goal? What is the secret of the mysterious high mountain lake, which goes through the cycle of appearing, expanding, and then draining? German geographer, cartographer, and climber Gottfried Mischbacher was born in 1843. And in the 80s of the 19th century, one of the most curious geographic enigmas of that time attracted his attention, the Tian Shan mountain system and the legendary Han Tengri Peak, which was the white point on the world map. The traveler has already ascended the Breton Alps and the peaks of the Caucasus and next in the list of peaks of the experienced mountaineer was Han Tol Peak. In fact, the mountain is very high and it is very hard to ascend it. It has at least the fifth category of complexity. To ascend this peak, one must have a good qualification and experience, altitude experience, technical experience and climbing experience. And any climber is a dream to ascend this peak. July 7, 1892, Merz Bacher started his journey from the village of Achotnice, it is the modern Narin Kol, to study the Han Tingri mountain massif. The expedition could not move far and did not end with the scent. The German climber did not give up. Something called him to the pyramidal Han Tol peak. He made the next attempt only 10 years later. In 1902, Merz Bacher, ignoring the experience of other climbers, decided to reach Han Tengri Peak from Bayan Kol Gorge.
The mountain looks so close and it seems that it stands just after the Bayankol Valley. But the distinguished geographer was wrong. His expedition, which consisted of more than 100 horses, soon reached the glacial massifs. There was a huge wall in front of them. This wall was later named as Marble Wall. The climbers decided to conquer the obstacle because, as they believed, the Han Tingri Peak was behind this wall. However, the idea was doomed to failure. The snow that covered the slopes did not trample, and it was like sand beneath feet. It was hard for researchers to walk. They fell through the snow, losing their strength. They could not come closer to their cherished goal. It was another fiasco. Han Tengri Peak is an avalanche-threatening mountain since it is one of the dominant in this region. Strong winds blow here very often. In the result of these strong winds, enormous snowy cornices are formed, which can break off at any time. The route to this peak goes through the glaciers. The glaciers also have a lot of dangers, such as snow cracks, ice cracks and avalanches. A lot of climbers died in the avalanches on the Han Tengri Peak. During the next climbing season of 1903, Gottfried Mirsbacher began his ascent from the Inilchi Glacier. After passing about 20 of the most complex kilometers, the explorers reached the fork of the gorge. And then the theory that was told earlier by another European traveler, Al Masi, was confirmed. The glacier consists of two branches. Having passed to the mouth of the north Inilchik, the travelers found that there was a huge moraine lake. Muddy water, iceberg giants that splintered from the glacier were floating. Later, the lake was named after its explorer, Gottfried Mirsbacher. To understand where this was going on, let's look at the image taken from outer space. Here is Han Tengri. Here is the south Inilchik Glacier. Here is its peak, here is the north in Ilchik. Approximately 200 years ago, they merged in this place. This is Lake Mersbacher. Here you can even see the floating icebergs. It is one kilometer in width. The length is about two and a half kilometers. The lake's discharge can be up to 1,000 meter cubed a second. Then water passes the tunnel somewhere, and in this place, the streams of water burst forth, further reaches the Inilchik River, and then the Aksu River. The height of this place is about 3,300 meters. This is a very high altitude lake. Merzbacher, who was closer than ever to his goal, had to go another 15 kilometers to see the Han Tengri Peak became the first climber who determined the real location of the legendary mountain. But he could not climb the peak itself. However, the surprising fact is that not all climbers who went by the route of Merzbacher could meet Lake Merzbacher on their way. Lake Merzbacher is a unique lake. It is filled up with water in the summer, and in the autumn, this water bursts under the glacier in Ilchik and flows to the river Aksu. So the lake disappears. After draining up, it is filled with water only the following year. And the icebergs that float on the lake surface, when it's full of water, lie on the bottom when the lake drains up. This is a very interesting spectacle. When blocks of ice lie on the sand, among the stones on the dry ground. They look like the ships on the rocks. The size of icebergs is as huge as a room. Experts note that with all its beauty, the lake constitutes a threat to one who wants to reach the peak. It is another insidious danger on the way to the treasured Han Tengri Peak. It poses a threat to the valley of the Aksu River, which then flows to China. No one lives on the upper side of it. 
Water discharge can cause destruction of infrastructure and creates major flooding downstream. But it's good that there is nothing to destroy. Gottfried Mirsbacher summarized his trip with the words that Teen Shan is not a place for climbing hobbies. The forecast that no one will be able to conquer the Han Tengri peak in the 20th century. However, the geographer made a mistake. In 1931, climbers climbed for the first time under the direction of Mikhail Pogrebetsky. Now the sun went down over the horizon, the sky darkened, the colors started to fade, the orange tones turned pink, the pink tones turned purple, and then turned gray. And only the Han Tengri peak was glowing a blood red color in the dark sky. Gradually, the mountains plunged into the darkness and dissolved in the thickened twilight completely. And the lights of Han Tengri slowly went out after them. So the mountains stoop up to humanity, but every climb is a separate story of a brave man who decided to reach its peak. However, the general questions remain unsolved. Is it true that Han Tengri is one of the boundaries of the mysterious Shambhala kingdom? Does the flower growing on these slopes grant immortality? And who among the poets gained the power of the great peak? The beauty of the landscapes can be observed from the height of Han Tengri worth mentioning separately. Probably this view justifies the risk of climbing this dangerous peak. It is so unpredictable, so picturesque. You can shoot from the same point but at different weather conditions and different times of the day. And anyway, photos of this mountain will be very beautiful. It is the dream of not only a photographer, but the dream of any artist. It is a very picturesque mountain, and it is very beautiful. Representatives of flora and fauna also surprise mountaineers with their ability not only to survive, but also to develop, live in such extreme and harsh conditions. For example, Gottfried Mirsbacher, during his journey in 1903, found an unusual flower here. A snow lotus. It is a rare flower which is often used in Daoist medicine. It is a flower which is covered with legends and secrets. It is one of the ten ingredients, the immortality elixir. The scientific name of snow lotus is Sasuria. It is a very rare plant and has its useful features. Our ancestors were afraid to find this flower on their way was believed the person who found a snow lotus would never come back home. Now this myth is explained in a simple way. Sausuria grows at an altitude of more than 3,000 meters, and the ascent of this altitude is very dangerous for people without special training and equipment. There is another mountain flower which every mountaineer dreams of seeing. I would like to note that a common well-known symbol of mountaineering is an elderwise flower, the Antopodium alpinium. This plant grows in Europe, the Himalayas and Almaty, and prefers rocky limestone places at about 2,000 to 3,000 meters altitude. This flower is in the IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, red list, and it is prohibited to pluck this flower. There is a legend, if a man loves a lady, he should find this flower high in the mountains and present it to his beloved lady as a promise of dedication. But I do not advise anyone to do so. It is better to take a picture and send this picture via WhatsApp. And this will be correct because elderwise flower is very rare and there is the risk of its extinction. You should protect it and it is not recommended to pluck this flower even for the herbarium. And is it possible that such a challenging, mysterious peak as Han Tengri serves as gates to another more mysterious world called Shambhala? Everyone has heard this name and many people associate it with the high mountains of Tibet. But according to another legend, Shambhala was a kingdom in Central Asia. 
somewhere between Simiriche and Altai. Shambhala, their faraway land, had geographical coordinates started from the bottom of Shambhal Pashkil mountain in the basin of the Hantingri River. According to the legend, there behind the icy haze, towns, monasteries, and tabernacles are hidden. Maybe they remained even though in ruins, but no one of our contemporaries has ever searched for them. According to the legend, one of the rulers of Shambhala kingdom visited South India. There he obtained knowledge, learned ancient Vedic traditions, came back to the kingdom and distributed this knowledge among his people. In the 9th century, during the conquest of Central Asia by the Arabs, the mysterious Shambhala became invisible to the human eyes. It is believed that this land still has the great knowledge and wisdom, but no one is able to find the location of the ancient kingdom. Most of scientists insist that the key to the discovery of Shambhala is Central Asia, not Tibet. Фредерик сказал, что есть вот магический треугольник, да, который связывает вершины Хантенгри. Nicholas Rorick said that there is a magic triangle that connects the peaks of Hantengri, Belucha, and Kanchenjunga, and Shambhala Kingdom. The entrance to the enlightened world is somewhere in this triangle. Of course, I want to believe this theory is true. Antingri Peak is only 3,000 kilometers far from Almaty. Certainly, the mountain has its own mysticism and secrets. Nowadays, not only tourists and climbers visit Kantengri Peak, but also researchers of esotericism who look for the divine strength. I think if a person has a dream to climb the Hantengri Peak or just to see this mountain, this is the honorable dream. Yes, to see Hantengri Peak is the honorable dream. And the true luck is when the one can grow in the foothills of such magnificence of nature. Mukag Khali Makhtayev was born on February 9th 1931, in the village of Karasaz, in the Naringkol district of the Almaty region. This is the year when the mountain stood up to humanity. This is the year when the great Kazakh poet was born. The weather of Mukag Khali Makataev's homeland, the foothills of the mountains, the mountainous regions have an impact on people, on their psychology. Dense green forests, bubbling rivers, springs, various animals and birds living at the foothills of mountains were etched in the memory of the people who grew up there, from childhood to adulthood. And it is true that they looked up to these mountain peaks when they began their journeys to reach their great dreams. I recognize the highest elegance of the peak. The rays are shining and enlightening the peak. This peak points high to the sky. What can get along with Han Tingri? It's the mountain of the gods. God lives here and heals wounds and people. Han Tingri Peak goes to the sky. It's the sharp chest of the great Tian Shan. The sun goes down here over the rocks. Majestic Han Tingri stands above the earth. Although the poem Han Tengri describes nature in direct meaning, through these words, for example, the spear, or how the sun loves it, or the chest of the Tian Shan, or the brave man, or how it looks at the ground with pity, Ukhag Ali Makataev describes people. With the expressions describing the height, he characterizes sensible, high-minded people. Are people with poor thoughts, he expresses his sympathy to them and looks at them with pity. And we should regard Han Tengri Peak as a poetic symbol of people with a proud, strong-willed character, the most generous people of the whole human civilization who are high and broad-minded. Mukha Khali Makatai was proud to call himself a mountaineer. He admitted that he had a restless and angry character. The reason of such character may lie in the February blizzard during which he was born.
Every year, dozens and hundreds of climbers, like pilgrims, go to the peak of Kan Tol. Artists seek to capture its greatness. The Han Tengri Peak continues to rise proudly above the other peaks in the heart of the Great Steppe, piercing the sky with its sharp peak. Thank you.